grew up in Redwood City till first grade, and then we moved to Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay was already well on my radar and my family's radar. My dad's, my grandfather, they, they all were avid fishermen. And so my parents built a home 100 feet from the water in Half Moon Bay. Early on, it was just my brother and I was 100 feet from the water and there were surfers, the older surfers that surfed out in front of the house uh, became, you know, I, I was this annoying little gnat that was always going, hi, that board looks pretty cool, you know. Ten-year-old kid, finally one of them gave me a surfboard and yeah, as years went by and the better I got at surfing and my curiosity was never ending and we looked in every nook and cranny to find surf, to find those perfect waves. And I mean, we had watched Mavericks for a couple years but then that day came where all the conditions were perfect and my ability had caught up with my desire to surf that wave a half a mile offshore. And so I said, Brian, we gotta go out there. T today's the day, let's do this. And he goes, there's no way I'm paddling out there with you. I'll tell the Coast Guard where I last saw you. I was committed to going out there. A lot of people ask me, were you afraid the first time you went out there? It's like, I thought about it. It's like, no, man, I want this more than anything. It's something that I've watched, studied. You know, it's like being teased by something. Big, perfect wave, big, perfect wave. And no one has surfed it, but I knew how to surf it. I knew how to get through the reefs. I knew how to read the water. I knew how to position myself right over the tip of that reef, a half a mile offshore and put myself in a 10 yard square every single time using landmarks and triangulating my position to where I was a half mile out in the ocean. I could paddle right back out to that exact same spot every time, which is really critical when you're surfing big waves because there are mountains of water and if you have one of those waves break on you, it could break your board, ruin your day, maybe end your life. Mavericks, to surfers worldwide, the name conjures up one thing, monster waves. When winter storms brew to the north, some of the planet's most powerful waves break right here, Northern California's Half Moon Bay. Many surfers have ridden the water here, but not many have made Mavericks home quite like Jeff Clark. I trusted my ability. I knew how to go out there and approach it, and I set myself up right at the end of the reef, and. I went over wave after wave, getting myself in the exact position to catch a wave. And once I did, it was all go. Turn, total commitment, I'm going. And I made the first five waves I've ever surfed at Mavericks, I made them all. And it wasn't as big as you see, like just recently, we had a swell that had 50 and 60 foot surf. The first day I surfed Mavericks was 20 feet, maybe a little bigger than 20 foot faces. Just a few steps from the iconic surf, Jeff set up his own brand of surf shop, Mavericks. He creates boards and gear that reflects his passion for the ocean and surfing its waves. When I first started surfing Mavericks, it was really hard to find a big wave gun in California. So I started making my own. And at this point, I've really refined big wave surfboards. The ocean's flat a lot, and I need something that stimulates my mind that is very calculated. Surfing for me is very calculated. Riding big waves is very calculated. Golf, I get that same kind of stimulation, but it's completely different. Surfing is action, reaction. Golf is all action and it's all on you to perform. And can you do it from a static position to an action where surfing's easy. I catch a wave and it tells me, that wave tells me what to do. That ball's sitting there laughing at me going, so you think you can hit me where you want, huh? And uh, you know, that's, 
the allure of golf, is being able to control your mind and your body to strike that ball perfectly to, with a little piece of metal on the end of a stick and make it go exactly where you want it to go. What's next for me? Well, I'm gonna keep surfing, and I'm sure someday when I'm out at Mavericks, it'll say, you know, have you ridden enough waves out here yet? <laughs> and I know that day's coming, but at this point, I still really enjoy riding big waves. I wanna thank the Lord for everything that I've been given, the talents he's given me, and the, the you know, hopefully that I can share my experiences with people and uh, help them to, you know, be the best that they can be. More than a typical surfer, Jeff Clark has grown from shaping his first surfboard in a garage to becoming an internationally known inventor, entrepreneur, and leader in the fabulous community of big wave surfers.